Hello cheapskaters, welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to be canning meatballs. My name is Kath Armstrong, I'm the creator of the Cheapskates Club where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing and I am happy to have you join me today. I've been to Costco and I've got yeah, about four, um, eight and a half kilos Let's see 4.3 4.2 eight and a half kilos of mince and we're going to turn it into meatballs we are going to move, turn it into meatballs for the pantry shelf they are going to be shelf stable ready to eat as soon as we crack that jar they are going to be delicious here's how we do it i'm going to tip you down so you can follow along with me bear with me close your eyes if you get a bit seasick Go. You've got to figure out how to do this, guys. All right, let me just tip you down. Oops, wrong way. So that you can see what's in there. Okay, I have my mixer. Just my KitchenAid with just the regular beta paddle on it. I am going to take some mince and I'm going to just drop it in to the mixer. You can do this bit by hand if you want to, but seriously, I have a mixer. It is a tool to be used, so I am going to use it. So I'm going to do about two kilos for this first run. Doing it in batches makes it easier. It doesn't really take any longer, but it certainly does make it a little bit easier. Now, why am I putting it into the mixer? because I am going to add some onion powder and some garlic powder. That's all the seasonings I'm going to add to it. Now, let me get this bit. There we go. It's in there. And, oops, dropped a bit. Okay, let me wipe my hands because I did not get the spoon. But we're adding powders because to our mixture for seasoning because we're not going to add fresh onion we're not going to add fresh garlic now I'm going to put um, maybe two tablespoons of onion powder in them and probably a good tablespoon of garlic powder they don't need to be highly seasoned and I'm not highly seasoning them because I want them to be fairly neutral in flavour um, as so that I can use them for spaghetti and meatballs or I can use them for subs or I can use them for have them as Spanish uh, Swedish meatballs with mash and gravy whatever Drop the paddle down and turn it on. And it will do the work for me. Already it smells great. I just want all those seasonings mixed through. And when it comes around again, there's a big clump of onion powder that I want to grab. Nobody wants a big clump of onion powder in their meatball. Okay, while that's mixing, I'm going to turn the oven on. 200. And let it warm up. Because these meatballs get cooked in the oven before they go into the jar. Okay. Let's see what that's like. That should be mixed, I think. All right, now, as I said, you can do this by hand if you want to. Next step, rolling the meatballs. So let me move that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, the meat and I have the tray. Move this 
be being out of the way. Okay. Now I've just got an ordinary baking sheet and I've lined two of them with my sill pats. But I've only got two of those. So one has to go on baking paper. Next, all I do is use my cookie dough. Do the wacky what's it? Get a scoop full. Push it into my hand. Shape it into a ball. You can't see that. Let me turn you so you can see. And put them on the tray. This way they're reasonably evenly uh, sized, which means they will cook reasonably evenly in the oven. The oven isn't really to cook them through because they will cook in the canning process. It is more to brown them and give them a nice crust on the outside so they will hold their shape when they are canned and to get some of the fat out of the meat. Now, that's all I do until I have used all the meat. So, I'll be back when I've got the last lot finished. Okay, here we have three trays of meatballs ready to go in the oven. They're going in at 180 for 30 minutes. That will let them cook most of the way through. It will brown them up nicely so they have a really good crust on the outside and they will hold their shape when they go into the jar. I will be back in half an hour when they're finished. Okay, I'm back. I forgot to hit record again. So the meatballs have been done they are in the jars, topped up with hot stock. Rims, rims have been wiped with vinegar. Lids, uh, flats and rings are on. I'll tip you down to show you. And they're ready to go in the canner. So let me just tip you down so you can see. I managed to get, let's see if I can turn you around. There we go. I got um, six quarts. Each quart holds 20 meatballs. That is enough for my family of five. And the leftovers is enough for two people is a pint. It's going in with the quarts. I'm not doing a separate run of pints of anything else, so it can just go in with the quarts. So now we have to go over to the canner and put them in. The canner already has its water in. The water is warm. It's on and water is warm because the jars are hot. I've got hot broth, hot meatballs. So remember hot jars, hot food, hot jars, hot canner, cold food, cold jars, cold canner. That way you avoid thermal shock. Alrighty, let's go and get them into the canner. I'll lift you up so you can see what I'm doing because otherwise you'll just hear my voice. So the can is just there on the stove. There's my handy dandy lifter. There is my handy dandy lifter right here in front of me. Okay. Let's get these into the can. The trivets in the bottom. I had to use narrow or regular mouth jars because they're hot. I'm out of wide mouth lids. I had enough wide mouth jars, I just didn't have enough wide mouth lids. That little one came on the middle. Okay, there you go. They're in the can as the lid goes on. I checked that everything's popped up, so that's free, that's free. I can see through that. Right, ready to go on. Tip it on. Turn the heat up to where it needs to be. I like to start my canner. It takes a bit longer for it to vent, but I start it where I know it's roughly going to hold its pressure, which is about there. 
They leave it now when there is a steady stream of steam coming from this vent. I'll set my timer for 10 minutes. And when the 10 minutes is up, I'll come back. I will put my weight on. It will come up to pressure. 11 pounds for my altitude. And once it's reached pressure, I'll start the timer for 90 minutes because we are doing pints. Okay, I'll be back when they're ready to come out of the canner. Okay, there is a steady stream of steam. That's very hard to say and it has been venting for 10 minutes. So now I am popping the weight on and when it comes up to pressure, I will start the timer for 90 minutes. I'll be back then. Okay, the canner went for 90 minutes. I turned the heat off. I've let it drop back to zero pressure naturally, cracked the lid and let it wait for about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. It's been about 10 minutes. And now I'm ready to take the jars out of the canner. So let's see how the meatballs went. Just need to find my handy dandy jar lifter and just see. So let me just tip you down and we'll see how we're going. Looks like it's siphoned just a little bit. No siphoning from that one. No siphoning from this one. No siphoning from this one. This is good. No siphoning, whoops, from this one. I'll be a bit careful, the jars will break. And our lonely little pint, no siphoning. Okay. Let's see if you can get me back in as well as the jars, shall we? Warm in here today. Okay, we've got six gorgeous pints of meatballs and sorry, six gorgeous quarts of meatballs and a pint. All ready for my pantry shelf. They are shelf stable and will stay shelf stable for at least 12 months longer if I want them to be on the shelf. They won't last that long. But it's good to know that I have six and a half meals of meatballs already done. These will stay here overnight. Tomorrow morning I will uh, take the rings off, wash the jars in hot soapy water and the rings, label them and put them away in the pantry ready to be used. Okay. That's how you can meatballs, guys. Really, really easy. Now, these are just plain. I put some onion powder and garlic in them just to flavour the meat a little bit. And that means I can then use them for anything. If I want to put them into a bolognese sauce, I can for spaghetti and meatballs. If I want it to go just into a marinara for a meatball sub, I can. If I want to make a cream sauce, they will become Swedish meatballs. If I just want to put gravy over them and have them with mash and veggies, that's what I can do. Oh, do you hear the pop, the ping? One has sealed, yes. That's what I want to do. If I just want to let them cool and tip them out, put skewers in them and make a sweet and sour dipping sauce or something like that, I can. The options are limited only by my imagination. So I feel rather chuffed with myself, 
I've got those done. Now I'll deal with the other four kilos and we'll have 12 jars, hopefully, on the shelf, ready to eat. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And it can be done, even in this crazy, crazy world we live in at the moment. But everyone needs a little bit of help. Sometimes finding that help is difficult. So if you could subscribe to our channel, like this video, and if you know someone else who might benefit from it, share it. Those three things actually help our channel be found more easily and the easier it is for people to find us the easier it is for us to spread the message that it is okay to live life debt free cashed up and laughing and it can be done even in today's crazy crazy world okay i will be back soon with another cheapskates club video but until then happy cheapskating